फूड पोन डिजीज एलिमेंटरी डिपेंडेंट डिजीजेस इंक्लूड द डिजीजेस एंड द सिंड्रोम्स ऑफ एन इनसफिशिएंट एंड एन एक्सेसिव न्यूट्रिशन and disease is related with food quality or food borne diseases diseases of insufficient nutrition they include diseases caused by insufficient intake of proteins and energy kwashiorkor core and nutritional marasmus hypo and a vitaminosis vitaminosis and agipomicroelementosis diseases of excessive nutrition include obesity diseases of the cardiovascular system liver disease kidney disease metabolic disorders and hypervitaminosis world health organization Uh, give us this definition of foodborne illness so foodborne illness are usually infectious or toxic in nature and caused by bacteria viruses parasites or chemical substances enter entering the body through contaminated food or water Foodborne diseases encompass a wide spectrum of illness and are a growing public health problem worldwide. They are the result of ingestion of foodstuffs contaminated with microorganisms or chemicals. The contamination of food may occur at any stage in the process from food production to consumption. from farm to fork and can result from environmental contamination including pollution of water soil or air the top 10 causes of food borne illness in its priority order are the following according to world health organization so first cause improper cooling some pathogens can form heat resistant spores which can survive cooking temperatures when the food begins cooling down and enters the danger zone these spores begin to grow and multiply If the food spends too much time in the danger zone, the pathogens will increase in number to a point where the food will make people sick. That is why the cooling process is cruel. Cooked food must be cooled from 60 degrees to 20 degrees Celsius in 2 hours or less. and uh, then from 20 degrees to 4 degrees Celsius in 4 hours or less. Second cause is advanced preparation. Advanced preparation is the cause of many food poisoning outbreaks, usually because food has been cooled improperly. Often foods that are prepared well before serving spend too much time in the danger zone. The food is left out at room temperature too long. The food is not heated or reheated properly or not cooled properly. The food is brought in and out of the danger zone too many times. The third reason infected person many people carry pathogens somewhere on or in their bodies in their gut in their nose on their hands in their mouth and in other warm moist places people who are carrying pathogens often have no outward signs of illness 
However, people with symptoms of illness, diarrhea, fever, vomiting, sore throat with a fever, hand infections, are much more likely to spread pathogens to food. Inadequate reheating for hold holding. Many restaurants prepare some of menu items in advance or use leftovers in their hot hold units the next day. In both cases, the foods travel through the danger zone when they are cooled for storage and again when they are reheated. Foods that are hot stored before serving and particularly vulnerable to pathogens. In addition to traveling through the danger zone twice, even in properly operating hot hold units, the food is close to the temperature that will allow pathogens to grow. Improper hot holding hot hold units are meant to keep hot foods at 60 degrees Celsius or hotter. At or above this temperature, pathogens will not grow. However, a mistake in using the hot hold unit can result in foods being held in the super dangerous zone between 20 degree and 49 degree Celsius temperatures at which pathogens grow very quickly. Contaminated raw food or ingredient with biological agents, natural toxins or chemical substances. We know that many raw foods often contain pathogens, yet certain foods are often served raw. While some people believe these foods served raw are good for you, the truth is that they, they have always been dangerous to serve or eat raw. Raw oysters served in the shell raw eggs in certain recipes, rare hamburg, raw uh, sushi, steak or uh, tartar. Unsafe source. Foods from approved sources are less likely to contain high levels of pathogens or other forms of contamination. Approved sources are those supplies that are inspected for cleanliness and safety by a government food inspector. Foods supplied from unreliable or disreputable sources, while being cheaper, may contain high levels of pathogens that can cause many food poisoning outbreaks. Use of leftovers. Using leftovers have been the cause of many outbreaks of food poisoning because of improper cooling and reheating. Leftovers that are intended to be served hot pass through the danger zone twice during the initial cooling of the hot food and when reheating. Those leftovers intended to be served without reheating or as an ingredient in other foods, such as sandwich filler, go through the dangerous zone during cooling and then, when being prepared and portioned, often stay in the dangerous zone for another long period. Cross-contamination. You can expect certain foods to contain pathogens, especially raw meat, raw poultry, and raw seafood. 
use extreme caution when you bring these foods into a kitchen. Cross-contamination happens when something that can cause illness, pathogens or chemicals, is accidentally put into a food where not previously found. This can include, for example, pathogens from raw meats getting into ready-to-eat foods like daily meats. It can also include nuts, which some people are very allergic to getting into a food that does not normally have nuts. No, for example, tomato sauce. And the last cause – inadequate cooking. Proper cooking is one of the best means of making sure your operation does not cause a food poisoning outbreak. Proper cooking kills all pathogens except spores or at least reduces their numbers to a point where they cannot make people sick. Inadequate cooking is often done by accident. For example, cooking still frozen poultry or meat, attempting to cook a stuffed bird using the same time and temperature as an unstuffed bird. Poultry using an inexperienced cook. So, food toxic causes, intoxications, occurs when bacteria grow in food and produce a waste product called a toxin, poison. When the food is eaten, the toxins are immediately appear in the body, causing a rapid reaction. Food bacterial toxicoses are acute foodborne diseases caused by microbe toxins. They are botulism and staphylococcal toxicosis. Botulism is a rare but serious foodborne disease. It is an intoxication usually caused by ingestion of the botulinum toxins formed in contaminated foods. Person-to-person -person transmission of botulism does not occur. Spores produced by the bacteria Clostridium botulinum exist widely in the environment. And in the absence of oxygen, they germinate, grow, and then excrete toxins. Spores of Clostridium botulinum are heat resistant, survive two hours at 100 degrees Celsius, and are inactivated at 120 degrees degrees Celsius. Clostridium botulinum are gram-positive spore-producing bacilli. They are obligate anaerobic. Clostridium botulinum will not grow in acidic conditions, pH less than 4.6. Boiling destroys the toxin produced by bacteria growing out of the spores under anaerobic conditions. Toxin becomes inactivate after one minute at 85 degrees Celsius or five minutes at 80 degrees Celsius. Due to plasmid contained in some Clostridium botulinum organisms, they can product seven neurotoxic types of botulinum toxin A, B, C, D, E, F, and G under anaerobic conditions. They are released by autolysis as a prototoxin. 
bound the hemagglutinins and inhibits degradation by digestive enzymes is doubtful. So, environments conductive to spore formation, low oxygen, warm temperatures and acidic water. Risk associated food stuffs include low acid preserved vegetables such as green beans, spinach, mushrooms and beets. Fish including canned tuna, fermented salted and smoked fish and meat products such as ham and sausage, home canned or home bottled foods and also honey. The food implicated differs between countries and reflects local eating habits and food preservation procedures. Occasionally, commercially prepared foods are involved. <coughs> the clinical picture. Symptoms usually appear within 12 to 36 hours within a minimum and maximum range of 4 hours to 8 days after exposure. When adults eat contaminated food, toxin is absorbed from the intestines and attaches to the nerves, causing the signs and symptoms of botulism. The secreted or ingested toxin travels to the neuromuscular junctions of skeletal muscle and blocks the release of acetylcholine and keeps the muscle from contracting, resulting in paralysis. Early symptoms include blood vision, dry mouth, difficulty in swallowing or speaking, marked fatigue, weakness, shortness of breath. Botulism affects first muscles supplied by cranial nerves. Vomiting, constipation and abdominal swelling may also occur. The disease can progress to weakness in the neck and arms after which the respiratory muscles and muscles of the lower body are affected. There is no fever and no loss of consciousness. The illness may progress to complete paralysis, respiratory failure and death. Prevention measures. Incidence of botulism is low, but the mortality rate is high. Also, there are very few cases of botulism poisoning each year. Prevention is extremely important. Prevention of foodborne botulism is based on good practice in food preparation particularly during heating, sterilization and hygiene. Foodborne botulism may be prevented by the inactivation of the bacterium and its spores in heat sterilized, for example, retort, or canned products, or by inhibiting bacterial growth and toxin production in other products. The vegetative forms of bacteria can be destroyed by boiling, but the spores can remain viable after boiling even for several hours. However, the spores can be killed by very high temperature treatments, such as commercial canning. Commercial heat pasteurization including vacuum-packed pasteurized products and hot smoked products may not be sufficient to kill all spores 
and therefore the safety of these products must be based on preventing bacterial growth and toxin production. Refrigeration temperatures combined with salt content and or acidic conditions will prevent the growth of the bacteria and formation of toxin. Diagnosis Successful treatment depends significantly on early diagnosis and the rapid administration of the botulinum antitoxin. Diagnosis is made by the presence of appropriate neurologic symptoms and by laboratory tests. They detect toxin or by culture of Clostridium botulinum bacterium from the patient's stool. Food samples associated with the suspect cases must be obtained immediately, stored in properly sealed containers and sent to laboratories in order to identify the cause and to prevent further cases. Next disease is staphylococcal food poisoning. Staphylococcal food poisoning is the name of the condition caused by the enterotoxins that some strains of Staphylococcus aureus produce. The causative agent characteristics. Staphylococcus aureus is a spherical bacterium which in microscopic examination appears in pears, short chains, or grape-like clusters. These organisms are gram-positive and heat label. Some strains are capable of producing a highly heat-stable protein toxin that causes illness in human. It is destroyed at 170 degrees Celsius. The sources Staphylococcus exist in air, dust, water, milk, sewage food or on food equipment, environmental service, surfaces, humans and animals. The primary reservoirs. Humans and animals are the primary reserves. Staphylococci are present in the nasal passage and throat and on the hair and skin of 50% or more of healthy individuals. This pathogen has also been associated with other illness of the skin that can be as mild as pamphlets and infected cuts to sepsis leading to death. This incidence is even higher for those who associate or met sick individuals and hospital environments. Food stuffs that are frequently incriminated in staphylococcal food poisoning include milk and dairy products, meat and meat products, poultry and egg products, salads such as eggs, tuna, chicken, potatoes and pasta, bakery products such as cream filled pastas, cream pies, chocolate, eclairs, sandwich fillings. Unlike many other forms of food poisoning in which an animal reserver is important, staphylococcal food poisoning results from contamination of the food by a human carrier. Although contamination can be prevented but by not allowing individuals with an obvious staphylococcal skin infection to prepare food, approximately half 
of the infections originate from careers with asymptomatic nasopharyngeal colonization without symptoms. After the staphylococci have been introduced into the food through a sneeze or contaminated hand, the food must remain a room at room temperature or warmer for the organisms to grow and release the toxin. The contaminated food will not appear or taste tainted. Subsequent heating of the food will kill the bacteria but not inactivate the heat stable toxin. Clinical picture. All people are considered being susceptible to this type of bacterial intoxication. However, intensity of symptoms may vary. The onset of symptoms in staphylococcal food poisoning is usually rapid. And in many cases, acute depending on individual susceptibility to the toxin, the amount of contaminated food eaten, the amount of toxin in the food ingested, and the general health of the victim. Enterotoxin infection occurs within one to seven hours of ingestion and lasts no longer than one to two days. The severity of illness depends on the amount of toxin ingested present in the food and general health and age group of the victim. Symptoms, main symptoms, nausea, severe vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain. Also, maybe weakness, sweating, fatigue, amalgia, headache, fever. Sometimes, sometimes it cannot be seen. So, due to severe vomiting, uh, diarrhea, dehydration, develop rapidly. The true incidence of staphylococcal food poisoning is unknown for a number of reasons, including poor responses from victims during interviews with health officials, uh, misdiagnosis of the illness, which may be symptomatically similar to other types of food poisoning, inadequate collection of samples for laboratory analysis and improper laboratory examination. In the diagnosis of staphylococcal foodborne illness, proper interviews with the victims and gathering and analyzing epidemiologic data are essential. Incriminated foodstuffs should be collected and examined for staphylococcus. The presence of relatively large numbers of enterotoxigenic staphylococci is good circumstantial evidence, evidence that the food contains toxin. The most conclusive test in the linking of an illness with a specific food or in cases where multiply vehicles exist, the detection of the toxin in the food samples. In cases where the food may have been treated to kill the staphylococci, as in pasteurization or heating, direct microscopic observation of the food may be an aid in the diagnosis. Control measures. The control measures to prevent staphylococcus intoxication are considerable handling during preparation, proper time and temperature control, good personal hygiene. Food stuffs after preparation should be kept hot enough, 60 degrees Celsius or above, or cold enough.
mycotoxicosis mycotoxicosis are diseases caused by mycotoxins they are toxic compounds that are naturally produced by certain types of fungi molds molds that can produce mycotoxins grow on numerous food stuffs such as cereals dried fruits nuts and species Mild growth can occur either before harvest or after harvest during storage or in the food itself, often under warm, damp and humid conditions. Most mycotoxins are chemically stable and soaked food processing. Several hardware different mycotoxins have been identified but the most commonly observed mycotoxins that present a concern to human health and livestock include anatoxins, ochrotoxins, fuminosis. The most significant among mycotoxins are aflatoxicosis, fusariotoxicosis and ergotism. Fungi mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are toxic substances produced by some fungi. The following mycotoxins may be found in foods. Aflatoxin, produced by aspergillus flavors, seen on corn and under a microscopic artrite. Ergot, produced by claviceps propria and intestinal irritants produced by poisonous mushrooms. Aflatoxin. Around 25% of world's crop is affected by mycotoxin and the vast majority of that is aflatoxin. Crops that are frequently affected by aspergillus include cereals, such as corn, wheat and rye, oil, seeds, peanut, sunflower, spices, chili peppers, black pepper, ginger and tree nuts, such as coconut and Brazil nut. Crops can be contaminated in two phases. Aspergillus species infect crops during growth and development. Contamination can build during storage or transport when exposed to warm, humid conditions or severe drought. Patients with aflatoxin toxicity may have a range of non-specific signs and symptoms, but the predominant features are of hepatotoxicity. Most common signs and symptoms are nausea, yellowing of skin and sclera, itching, vomiting, bleeding, abdominal pain, lethargy, edema, convulsions, coma and death. Acutoxicity results when someone takes in a high amount of aflatoxin in a very short time. And chronic toxicity occurs by consuming small amounts of aflatoxins at a time, but over a prolonged period. Chronic exposure to aflatoxin can cause impaired growth and development, especially in children. Hepatocellular carcinoma presenting at weight loss, abdominal mass, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, bleeding, psychosis, etc. Next disease is ergotism. 
infection of grasses and cereals with fungal species of genus Claviceps produced sclerotium. Ergotism is a condition caused by ingestion ergot found on rye and some other grains. The occurrence of Claviceps purpura must have begun with the cultivation of rye since it was far more common on that host than in other grains. Rye was a wheat grain and occurred wherever wheat was cultivated. Often it became the dominant plant when wheat fields were abundant. Thus, in a way, wherever civilization became established, rye would follow it there. However, it was not cultivated for food until some time in the early Middle Ages, around the 5th century, in what is now Eastern Europe and Western Russia. It was in the Rhine Valley that the first mere outbreak of gangrenous ergotism was documented. documented. It was at this time that the symptoms, but not the knowledge of what caused the symptoms, from consumption of ergot was called holy fire. For because of the burning sensation in the extremes that were experienced by the victims of gangrenous ergotism and holy because of the belief that this was a punishment from God. The victims' toes, fingers, arms and legs often became blackened as a result of gangrene and would eventually die from the infections in these extremes. In addition, the victims often suffered from convulsive ergotism as well from the psychoactive properties that may occur in the erga. Numerous epidemics of ergotism followed with thousands dying as a result of the continual consumption on infected rye, with the most susceptible victims often being children. The so-called ergot that replaces the grain of the rye is a dark purish sclerotum from which the sexual stage of the life cycle will form after overwintering. The sexual stage consists of stroma in which the SK and SK spores are produced. Although the ergot is far different in appearance than the true grain, its occurrence was so common that it was thought to be part of the ripe plant until the 85th when the true nature of the ergot was understood. The fungus leaves over winter in the form of sclerotum, a dense mass of fungus cells. Usually the sclerota are somewhat larger and less dense than the seeds of the host plant on which they are born. So symptoms caused by consumption of egg and of right can be divided into convulsive symptoms and gangrenous symptoms. Convulsive ergotism is characterized by nervous dysfunction where the victim is twisting and contorting their body in pain, trembling and shaking, more or less fixed twisting of the neck which seems to simulate convulsions or fits. In some cases, this is accompanied by muscle spams, confusions and hallucinations, as well as a number of other symptoms. Gangrenous ergotism. The victim may lose parts of the extremites, such as toes, fingers, earlobes, or in more serious cases, arms and legs may be lost. This type of ergotism causes gangrene to occur by constricting the blood vessels 
leading to the extremites. Because of the decrease in blood flow, infection occur in the extremites accompanied with burning pain. Once gangrene has occurred, the fingers, toes, etc. become mummified and will eventually fall off as a result of infection. If the infected extremites are not removed, infection can spread further up the extremity that has been infected. Gangrenous ergotism is common in grazing farm animals. The ergot alkaloids are rapid-acting, powerful oxytoxins. They stimulate the smooth muscle of the uterus. They are also vasoconstrictors. There was severe internal feeling of heat and intense thirst, multiply ulcerations of the skin, a burning cessation of the limbs, the feeling of ants and mice crawling underneath of skin, the drying and turning black of hands, arms, feet and legs, legs, blindness, dementia and mental degeneration. Acute ergot poisoning today is essentially a problem only in chemotherapy and rarely has it occurred recently because of eating. The present impact of ergot through careful screening of the ergot stage, ergotism is now rare. The clean dry seeds afflatation method has been devised. A solution of approximately 30% percetum chloride is poured over the, over the rice seeds and stirred. The ergot stage is a variant and will flow to the top and can be skimmed off and the seeds planted. To minimize the amount of ergot formation, after rye has been harvested, the field is deeply ploughed so that the ergot will not germinate. A different crop can then be rotated the following year that is not susceptible to ergot which will break the cycle of an ergot that may have survived the previous year's ploughing. Unfortunately, there has never been a variety of rye that has been developed that is resistant to ergot. These are medicinal products that have been extracted from ergot. Some of the more common examples include ergotamine, which is prescribed for various causes of headaches, including migraines. Ergonavine is used to control postpartum hemorrhage and cause the contraction of the uterus. Elementary toxolic Severe food intoxication caused by mycotoxins of Fusarium fungi. Road of infection. Nutritional, most often associated with eating foods from the overwintered grain containing spores on the fungi. Find all over the globe. It is established that the most exposed residents of agricultural areas Usually, the increase in the number of cases is observed in the period from April to June. The sick person is not contagious to other. The source of infection are crops that served as a nutrient medium for reproduction and accumulation pollen in the winter. Such agricultural crops are millet, buckwheat, wheat, rye, oats, and barley. Favorable growing conditions for the fungus are high humidity, presence of oxygen, and heat. In the cold season, the fungi turn into spores and survive the winter. And then spring again begins to produce pollen. Risk factors for outbreaks are considered the warm winter and early spring. 
as well as high humidity and the other violations of rules of storage of cereals. The toxin is not destroyed by heat treatment, fermentation, able to keep their properties up to five years, especially when the storage temperature range from minus one to plus five degree Celsius. Populations at risk for morbidity are patients with immunosuppression infection, HIV infection, prolonged therapy with contrasteroids, corticosteroids, immunosuppressants, after splenectomy, children, agricultural workers, and food industry workers. In the clinic, elementary mycotoxicosis, there are two types of the cause, which is in the direct proportion to the amount eaten grain product of diphtheric strain, the concentration of toxin in the food product, and the immune competence of the organism of the sick. So it can be lighting and typical. Lighting, characteristically rapid growth, of the clinical manifestations, death during the first days of the disease due to expanded dick or sepsis. There was syndrome. Typical lasts about three or four weeks, characterized by a gradual increase in the severity of the condition and severe stages, includes toxic. Lake appendix and anginal hemorrhagic stage. The incubation period ranges from two to six weeks by eating large quantities of food from infected grain. Symptoms appear after a few days. The first signs of poisoning are nausea, vomiting, loose watery stools, diarrhea weakness, decreased performance, and fatigue. Describes the symptoms last about three days, being replaced by a period of lacopenia. Clinically, this condition reveals itself in increasing weakness, malaise, drowned uh, This stage usually lasts two, three, at least six to eight weeks. In the future, by exacerbating the toxic effects of anger, cause hemorrhagic stage. Patients complain of high rises in body temperature over 39 degrees Celsius. Chills or some note the appearance of petechial hemorrhage on the body, nasal bleeding. At the same time, having severe pain on swallowing, unpleasant putrid breath, dirty gray deposits on the tonsils, oral cavity, and pharynx. With the progression of the disease are formed absence of the skin tissue and internal organs. To minimize the health risk from mycotoxins, people should follow some advice. Inspect whole grains, especially corn, wheat, rice, dried figs and nuts, such as peanuts, almond, walnut, coconut, Brazil nuts, and hazelnuts, which are all regularly contaminated with anatoxins for evidence of mild and discard any that look multi, discolored or shriveled. Avoid damage of grains before and during drying and in storage as damaged grain in is more prone to invasion of mulch and therefore mycotoxin contamination. Buy grains and nuts as fresh as possible Make sure that foods are stored properly. Keep free of insects, dry and not too warm. 
Not keep foods for extended periods before using. Ensure a diverse diet. This not only helps to reduce mycotoxin exposure, but also improves nutrition. Next, food toxic infections are acute non-contagious diseases developing during consumption of food heavily polluted with agents. They have the following features. Short incubation period, average 6 to 4, uh, 24 hours. Specific dietary history for all sick persons. Outbreaks and epidemics if products was released through centralized catering organization or trade organization. Local epidemiology. Fast outbreak cessation after removal of sores and gastroenteritis. The agents that may cause a toxic infection, Clostridium perfringens, Citrobacter klebsiella, Enterobacterium pseudomonas, Aeromonas, etc. Escherichia coli is a bacterium that is commonly found in the gut of humans and other warm-blooded animals. While most streams are harmless, some can cause severe foodborne disease. Escherichia coli infection is usually transmitted through consumption of contaminated water or food such as undercooked meat products and raw milk. Symptoms of disease, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, which may be bloody and with mucus, fever and vomiting may also occur. Most patients recover within 10 days, although in a few cases the disease may become life-threatening. Clostridium perfringens is an anaerobic, gram-positive, spore-forming road. It is widely distributed in the environment and frequently occurs in the humans and many domestic and feral animals' intestines. Spores of the organism persist in soil sediments and areas subjected to human or animal fecal pollution. Clostridium perfringens bacteria capable of producing the food poisoning toxin. In most cases, the actual cause of poisoning by Clostridium perfringens is temperature abuse of prepared foodstuffs. Small numbers of the organisms are often present after cooking and multiply to food poisoning levels during cool down and storage of prepared foodstuffs. Meat, meat products and gravy are the foodstuffs most frequently implicated. Institutional feeding, such as school cafeterias, hospitals, nursing homes, prisons, where large quantities of food are prepared several hours before serving, is the most common circumstance in which perfringens poisoning occurs. The common form of perfringens poisoning is characterized by Intense abdominal cramps, nausea, multiply fatty diarrhea that begin 8 to 22 hours after consumption of foodstuffs containing large number of those. The illness is usually over within 24 hours, but less severe symptoms may persist in some individuals for one or two 
weeks. A few deaths have been reported because of dehydration and other complications. Necrotic enteritis caused by Clostridium perfringens is often fatal. This disease also begins because of ingesting large numbers of the causative bacteria in contaminated foodstuffs. Death from necrotic enterites are caused by infection and necrosis of the intestines and from resulting septic anemia. This disease is very rare. The young and elderly people are the most frequent victims of perfringens poisoning. Except the case of necrotic enteritis, complications are few in persons under 30 years of age. Elderly persons are more likely to experience prolonged or severe symptoms. Diagnostics Standard bacteriological culturing procedures are used to detect the organism in implicated foodstuffs and emphasis of patients. Serological assays are used for detecting enterotoxin in the faces of patients and for testing the ability of strains to produce toxin. The procedures take one to three days. Infection occurs when food contains living pathogens that grow in the human intestinal tract after the food is eaten. Because the bacteria continue to multiply in the body and cause infection, the reaction will be slower. These diseases are contagious because there are several transmission mechanisms in the spread of them oral with food, oral with water, contact household. Listerosis. Listerosis can grow well under refrigeration temperatures, although very slowly. The source. This is the basis for the seven-day date marking requirements for refrigerated potentially hazard foods here are several outbreaks each year associated with fresh soft cheeses made from unpasteurized milk, ready to eat meat products such as uh, cooked uh, or fermented meats and sausages, and cold smoked fishery products. With a fresco is a cheese that is very popular in the Hispanic community. There are too many types of listeros, a non-invasive form and invasive form. Non-invasive listerosis is a mild form of the disease affecting mainly otherwise healthy people. The incubation period is short, few days. Symptoms include diarrhea, fever, headache, muscle pain. Outbreaks of this disease have generally involved the ingestion of foods containing high doses of listerosis monocytogens. Invasive listerosis is a more severe form of the disease and affects certain high-risk groups of the population. These include pregnant women, patients undergoing treatment for cancer, AIDS and organ transplants, elderly people and infants. This form of disease can have severe symptoms and a high mortality rate, 20 to 30 percent. Incubation period is usually one or two weeks, but can vary between a few days and up to 90 days. The symptoms include fever, muscle pain, septic anemia, meningitis. Listerosis can lead to spontaneous abortion or fatal death, even if the mother is asymptomatic. The death rate among newborn children can be as high as 50%. The control measures for controlling illness include prevention of cross-contamination 
and using pasteurized milk. Next disease, food poisoning by salmonella. Salmonella is one of the major foodborne pathogens that cause systemic or enteric infection, affecting approximately 2 million people worldwide, worldwide each year. Salmonella is a genus of bacteria that are a major cause of foodborne illness throughout the world. The bacteria are generally transmitted to humans through consumption of contaminated food of animal origin, mainly meat, poultry, eggs and milk. The symptoms of salmonella infection usually appear 12 to 32 hours after infection and include fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, nausea and sometimes vomiting. The illness usually lasts 4 to 7 days and most people recover without treatment. However, in the very young and the elderly and in cases when the bacteria enter the bloodstream, antibiotherapy may be needed. Prehenosis was typically associated with pork. A change in feeding Practices has led to a reduction in this illness as well as a reduction in the cooking temperatures for pork. This pathogen is still a major concern in certain wild game populations. The symptoms fever, muscle pain, especially the intercostal muscles, swelling of the face, skin rash, damage of maricot lung, central nervous system. This source meat affected by trichinosis pigs, wild boar, beer, walrus, and other animals. The prevention measures. The prevention measures. Veterinary control. Meat affected by trichinella spiralis must not be cooked. It is a sanitary dangerous product. It must be destroyed. Trematodes. People get the infection when they ingest the second intermediate host that is infected with larval forms of the parasite. Here you can see some trematodes, some disease, clonohesis, opistrochesis, fasciolysis and perigenemesis. Early and light infections often pass unnoticed as they are asymptomatic or scaly symptomatic. Conversely, if the warm load is high, general malaise is common and severe pain can occur, especially in the abdominal region. Chronic infections are invariably associated with severe morbidity. Symptoms are mainly organ-specific and reflect the final location of the adult wounds in the body. Eosinophilia is characteristic for all hemithesis. Prevention and control. Control of foodborne traumatitis aims to reduce the risk of infection and at controlling associated morbidity. Like other diseases, including an animal cycle, for the control of foodborne traumatids, an approach that links animal, human, and environment aspects should be used. The preventive measures are aimed at the decrease or elimination of risk factors, unhygienic preparation and storage of food, the consumption of raw fish and seafood, the using of unprocessed human and animal vessel waste and manual even deliberately as fish feed. The following me measures are recommended. Veterinary measures, public health measures, food safety practices and education, improved access to treatment using safe and effective and helmetic medicines, drugs that expel the worms, Define at risk populations based on consumption patterns of raw fish, 
and focus on these four medication preventive chemotherapy. It involves a population-based approach where everyone in a given region or area is given medicines irrespective of their infection status. It is recommended in areas where large numbers of people are infected. A vigilant use of this preventive treatment is recommended due to rarely observed side effects. Natural toxins are toxic compounds that are naturally produced by living organisms. These toxins are not harmful to the organisms themselves, but they may be toxic to other creatures, including humans, when eaten. These chemical compounds have diverse structures and different biological function and toxicity. Plants produce some toxins as a natural defense mechanism against predators, insects or microorganisms, or as a consequence of infestation with microorganisms such as mold in response to climate stress such as drought or extreme humidity. Other sources of natural toxic are microscopic algae and plankton in oceans or sometimes in lakes that produce chemical compounds that are toxic to humans but not to fish or shellfish that eat these toxin producing organisms. When people eat fish or shellfish that contain these toxins, illness can rapidly follow. Products they contain natural toxins can be toxic by nature and toxic in certain conditions. So toxic by nature, for example, poisoning mushrooms, bitter nuclear stone fruit, poisonous plants, caviar and soft draw of some fish species, anticrine glands. And toxic in certain conditions can be conditionally edible mushrooms without necessary cooking, nuts of peach, tongue tree, raw beans, rotted potatoes, turned green, fat fish. Aquatic biotoxins. Toxins formed by algae in the ocean and fresh water are called algal toxins. Algal toxins are generated during blooms of particular nature occurring algal species. Shellfish such as mussels, scallops and oysters are more likely to contain these toxins than fish. Algal toxins can cause diarrhea, vomiting, tingling, paralysis and other effects in humans, other mammals or fish. The algal toxins can be retained in shellfish and fish or contaminate drinking water. They have no taste or smell and are not eliminated by cooking or freezing. Another example of cigatora fish poisoning, which is caused by consuming fish contaminated with dinoflagellates that produce uh, toxins. Some fish known or to harbor uh, cucurotoxins include barracud, black grouper, dog snapper, and king mackerel. Symptoms include nausea, vomiting, neurological symptoms such as tingling sensation on fingers and toes. There is currently no specific treatment for this poisoning. Furacomarenza. These toxins are present in many plants, such as parsnips, closely related to carrots and parsley, uh, cereal roots, uh, citrus plants, lemon, lime, grapefruit, and some medical medicinal plants. Procomarines are stress toxins and are released in response to stress, such as physical damage to the plant. Some of these toxins can cause gastrointestinal problems in susceptible people. So, furosericamerins are phototoxic. They can cause severe skin reactions under sunlight UV exposure. While mainly occurring after dermal uh, exposure, such reactions have also been reported after consumption of large quantities of certain, certain vegetables containing high levels of furocomerins. 
cyanogenic glycosides. Cyanogenic glycosides are phototoxin, toxic chemical produced by plants which occur in at least 2,000 plant species, of which a number of species are used as food in some areas of the world. Cassava, sodium, stone fruits, bamboo roots and omur are especially important foods containing cyanogenic glycosides. The potential toxicity of a cyanogenic plant depends primarily on the potential that its consumption will produce a concentration of cyanide that is toxic to exposed humans. In humans, the clinical signs of acute cyanide intoxication can include rapid respiration, drop in blood pressure, dizziness, headache, stomach pains, vomiting, diarrhea, mental confusion, cyanosis with twitching and convulsions followed by terminal coma. Death due to cyanide poisoning can occur when the cyanide level exceeds the limit and individual is able to detoxify. Poisonous mushrooms contain cyclic octopeptides called amanitins. Wild mushrooms can contain several toxins such as uh, muscimol, mushroom, which can cause vomiting, diarrhea, confusion, visual disturbance, salivation, and hallucinations. Onset of symptoms occurs 6 to 24 hours or more after ingestion of mushrooms. Fatal poisoning is usually associated with delayed onset of symptoms that are very severe with toxic effect on the liver, kidney and nervous systems. Cooking or peeling does not inactivate the toxin. toxins. It is recommended to avoid any wild mushrooms and they definitely identified as non-poisonous. Pyrolizidinalkaloids uh, Pyrolyzide dinalkaloids are toxins produced by an estimated 600 plant species. The main plant sources are the families Borotinaceae, Asteraceae, and Fabaceae. Many of these are weeds that can grow in fields and contaminate food crops. Pyrolyzide dinalkaloids can cause a varied of adverse health effects. They can be acutely toxic and of main concern is the DNA damaging potential of certain pyrolyzidine alkaloids potentially leading to cancer. Next, Solanese plant family. All Solanese plants which include tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants, contain natural toxins called salanis and canonine. While levels are generally low, high concentrations are found in potato sprouts, bitter tasting peel and green pots as well as in green tomatoes. The plants produce the toxins in response to stresses like pricing, UV light, microorganisms and attack from insect pests or herbivores. To reduce the production of salanins and canonin, it is important to store potatoes in a dark, cool and dry place and not eat green or sporting parts. Lactins. Many types of beans contain toxins called lactins and kidney beans have the highest concentrations, especially red kidney beans. As few as four or five raw beans can cause severe stomachache, vomiting and diarrhea. Lactins are destroyed when the dried beans are soaked for at least 20 hours and then boiled vigorously for at least 10 minutes in water. Tinned kidney beans have already had this process applied and so can be used without further treatment. Scumbrotoxicosis. 
is caused by the ingestion of food stuffs that contain high levels of histamine and possibly other vasoactive amines and compounds. Histamine and other amines are formed by the growth of certain bacteria, specific bacteria of fish, specific bacteria of fish intestines, and the subsequent action of their decarboxylase enzymes on histidine and other amino acids in food, either during the production of a product or by spoilage of foodstuffs. It may be due to refreezing or using food additives for softening the small bones of fish during preservation. These entails output histidine from fish muscle cells and histamine formation and the decarboxylation reaction results. The source. Any food that contains the right amino acids and um, is subjected to certain bacterial contamination and growth may lead to scumbrot poisoning when ingested. Fishery products that have been implicated in scumbrot poisoning include the tunas, mehi mehi, blue flea fish, mackerel, fat herring and abalone. Many other products also have caused the toxic effects. The primarily cheese involved in intoxications has been Swiss cheese. The toxin forms is in a food when certain bacteria are present and time and temperature permit their growth. Distribution of the toxin within an individual fish fillet or between cans in a batch can be unequal with only some sections of a product causing illness and other not. Neither cooking nor canning or freezing reduces the toxic effect. The clinical picture. The onset of intoxication symptoms is rapid ranging from immediate to 30 minutes. Initial symptoms may include a tingling or burning sensation in the mouth, a rash on the upper body, and a drop in blood pressure. Frequently, headaches, skin redness, and itching of the skin are encountered. The symptoms may progress to nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, and may require hospitalization, particularly in the case of elderly or impaired patients. The duration of the illness is usually three hours, but may last for several days. All humans are susceptible to scumbrot poisoning. However, the symptoms uh, can be severe for the elderly and for those taking medications such as isinacid. Because of the worldwide network for harvesting, processing, and distributing fishery products, the impact of the problem is not limited to specific geographical areas. Diagnostic. Diagnosis of the illness is usually based on the patient's symptoms, time of on the onset, and the effect of treatment with the antihistamine medication. The suspected food must be analyzed within a few hours for evaluating levels of histamine to confirm a diagnosis. To minimize the health risk from natural toxins in food. Some advices. Not assume that if something is natural, it is automatically safe. Throw away breast damage or discolored food and in particular moldy foods. Throw away any food that does not smell or taste fresh or has an unusual taste. Eat only mushrooms or other wild plants or animal products that have definitely been identified as non-poisonous. And chemical contaminants. The following groups represent chemical contaminants, pesticides, fertilizers, environmental pollution such as heavy metals, uh, benzaprine, phen um, polychlorides, dioxins. Compounds are migrating from polymeric and other materials uh, into food. 
substances used for the product's falsification, substances that accumulate in the products as a result of heat treatment. Pesticides. Now, there are more than 1,000 pesticides used around the world to ensure food is not damaged or destroyed by pests. Many of the older, cheaper pesticides um, can remain for years in soil and water. These chemicals have been banned by countries who signed the 2001 Stockholm Convention, an international treaty that aimed to eliminate or restrict the production and use of persistent organic pollutants. Each pesticide has different properties and toxicological effects. The toxicity of a pesticide depends on its function and other factors. For example, insecticides tend to be more toxic to humans than herbicides. The same chemical can have different effects at different doses. It can also depend on the road by which the exposure occurs. When people meet large quantities of pesticides, this may cause acute poisoning or long-term health effects, including cancer and adverse affection on reproduction. None of the pesticides that are authorized for use on food and international trade today is canatoxic. Food should comply with chemical regulations, in particular with maximum residual limits. Adverse effects from these pesticides occur only above for a certain safe level of exposure. Dioxins are a group of chemically related compounds that are persistent environmental pollution. Dioxins are found throughout the world in the environment and they accumulate in the food chain, mainly in the fatty tissue of animals. More than 90% of human exposure is through food, mainly meat and dairy products, fish, fish and shellfish. Many national authorities have programs in place to monitor the food supply. Dioxins are highly toxic and can cause reproductive and development problems, damage the immune system, interfere with the hormones and cause cancer. Due to the omnipresence of dioxins, all people have background exposure, which is not expected to affect human health. However, due to the highly toxic potential, efforts need to be undertaken to reduce current background exposure. Prevention or a reduction of human exposure is best done by source-directed measures, strict control of industrial processes to reduce formation of dioxin.